Hi, I'm Buffy Williams, the creator of the World Knowledge Academic Workbook. I'm here today to go through my financial portion of the workbook so that you can see hands on how it will work within a classroom. So I'm going to share my screen and go through the presentation with you. Now, as you see the presentation here, it says, welcome to Financial 101, networking and interviewing and pursuing financial goals. Well, I will talk about the Financial 101 portion, but I will skip through the interviewing portion because this was specially tailored for a program. And oftentimes when organizations call me in, they want to talk about different aspects of the financial workbook or the academic workbook. And so more specifically, this particular program wanted to focus on financial 101, networking and interviewing, and also pursuing financial goals. Um, in addition to the PowerPoint presentation that will be available if you choose to purchase the workbook, I have the workbook in a couple of different formats. I have one for the facilitator and one for the student. Now, the facilitator's workbook looks exactly like this. It can be ordered and it also gives instructions to the facilitator on how to implement the financial 101 portion and other segments of the workbook. But you can just focus solely on the financial section. The academic workbook for the students looks like this. And it also has all of the forms that the student was, students would need in order to work through the workbook. So this is one format. You could choose it in a textbook style, which some people like because it's lighter and it's easy to carry around and uh, it's easily identifiable if you're going to work with students. And the other option that I have is one that's more of a bound spiral. It also has the facilitator's guide and all the information that is associated with implementing the program. But what I'm going to do today is go through the PowerPoint portion that I generally make available to anyone who purchases the workbook or wants me to come on site to teach the financial portion. So, of course, initially when I come in, I tell students about my background. Um, as you probably already know, I'm a licensed therapist and a nationally certified therapist, but I have also worked with a federal TRIO program and I have been in administration work for the past 18 to 20 years. So with that said, um, my work life has always brought me back to working with young adults and adolescents. And Financial 101 is just a piece of that that I work with with the financial program. So I just kind of, in my own way, once I branched out into my own private practice, expounded on the things that I had already been working with throughout my career. And so one of the components of the federal program was that we had to offer financial um, literacy and one of the components of that, of course, was exposing students to different things. So I, I received a, a wealth of knowledge from there, even though my background is um, in undergrad, journalism and advertising, and for my master's counseling and psychology. And I do have some doctoral level work in organizational uh, leadership in higher ed education. But let's get into the PowerPoint. So as you can tell, um, students sometimes they need to be um, excited by graphics. So I thought that this um, world would um, be a good subliminal message, not so subliminal, but kind of an overt message um, to say that, you know, when you're thinking about networking and financial um, plans and financial goals, you want to think globally and not so much on a local level. And the students that I work with, they're only used to dealing with their segment population, which is usually pretty closed off and they don't have a lot of exposure. And so one of the things that I wanted to kind of focus on is to get them to start to think globally versus locally. So that is embedded throughout the academic workbook that I have. 
So of course, when I come in, if I have someone assisting me, I introduce myself and I introduce anyone who is coming along with me. So with the agenda, I talk about financial 101, I talk about budgeting, and I talk about identity theft. And I also teach everyone in the workshop how they can gain all of this knowledge on their own. I talk about networking, job interviewing, appropriate dress, and resumes. Um, one of the activities that I have in the presentation is how to choose a bank. And that's important because a lot of Americans are unbanked at this um, time for a number of different reasons. Some people have had a bad financial experience with a financial institution. Some have just never been exposed to um, the banking system, and they don't really understand the importance of establishing a banking relationship. So I do go through how to choose a bank. One of the things I wanted to make sure that they knew was just to keep their doors open and to understand that everyone makes mistakes along the way, but the key is just not to stay down. So some of the uh, activities that I have them do is I have them think about their lifestyle and their goals. So initially when the students come in, and this is um, similar to a program that we work with the um, County Extension Office on, and they used to offer what was called Real World. And this is um, a nod to them, but not exactly like their program. So one of the things that the students come in and they do, and this information is also provided, they come in and they select a career. And when they do that, it's giving them a career, a salary, and it tells them how many taxes they need to be, that need to be taken out of their check. They also choose a leisure activity, where they would like to live, what type of home they would like to live in, whether they want children or not, and what type of transportation. So they get a chance to pick a car, um, or if they choose not to have a car because they want to live in a metro area, they can choose public transportation. And then along the way, you'll see that we'll have life experiences that come up and they will have to utilize the salary that they're given, take into account the taxes that are going to come out each month, take into account any um, children that they have if they have a family and so they have to make deductions in all of those areas each time they receive a payday and so you'll see that as we go through the slides so here we are we're at a payday so what we tell them now and they get excited oh I have a payday so they have paper and pencil and calculator at this point and so we ask them to write down their salary and then we instruct the students to deduct $330 for their taxes. And we know that it could be much higher or lower than that, but taking into account federal taxes, state taxes, FICA and Medicare. And then we also ask them to deduct $185 for health insurance, $250 for utilities, and $150 per child that they have. And so then, they're taking a real hard look at what their finances are going to be like. Um, and so when they have that payday. And so I wanted them to also note that they will be deducting um, their housing and their leisure activities each time they do an activity. So then we go into the financial transition of thinking about what are expenses in the household, what should our savings look like, investing, what are our options, and retirement. Even though it seems like it's so far away, what can I do in order to plan for retirement? So we talk about student loans and trying not to take out student loans if you don't have to, just get a second job. Um, we also talk about the differences in um, student loans. We talk about IRAs and 401ks. And we also encourage them at this time to save up six to 12 months of their salary and let that be their first financial goal. So we let them start at $1,000 and then after that, their next goal should be six months of their salary. And then also that $1,000 should go towards their emergency fund. We talk a little bit about stocks and bonds. 
in real estate and life insurance, and then also how um, retirement can be a relaxing experience where you can travel depending on what you want in retirement, but you need to plan for that early. So then we ask them to set SMART goals and, and think about how much they could save incrementally over time. And so this, this particular example just simply shows them saving up $30 a month for 12 months and showing them how much money that would be. So then we define what is SMART goals. And then we go to the SMART goals table. And then we ask them to select a short term, a medium term, and then a long range planning goal for their finances. And then we explain to them, of course, short term is three months, medium is 12 months, up to three to 12 months, and then long term is longer than that. Then we give them an additional payday. And then we tell them that Make sure that once they make these initial deductions for taxes, health care, utilities, and their children, that they also have to deduct for the house that they're living in, the rent is, is placed on the card, and then if they have transportation, they have to deduct their car payments and any leisure activities. Then we talk through the banking system and choosing a bank. Then we have a life situation. So you tell them all the men, your sister went to the beach for spring break and you, they spent, she spent all of her money and she needs to borrow money for rent, give her $500. So then we have all the males in the room to deduct $500 from their account. And for the females, we have them, your best friend wanted to go to uh, uh, Panama City for spring break. And so they want to split the gas with them and the lodging. And so they're instructed to deduct $250. Then we talk about credit score, the ranges of credit score, how you're rated, and then how to establish good credit. Then we go through another life situation. All the men, you have a blowout on your car, pay the mechanic $250. All the women, you have to buy clothes for college because you gain 10 pounds and to cost the cost of your new clothes will be $150. We talk about the dangers of being a co-signer. And then we talk about the different percentages of your credit score and what your credit score is comprised of. Here's an additional payday. And then we talk about the credit bureaus and what the three main credit bureaus are, who they are, how you can contact them, and if you have an issue, what, how you should go about resolving that. We talk about places where you can actually see your credit score. We go back into the savings plan and encourage them to look at um, their income tax when they get their income tax check and saving some of that and then making small deposits again incrementally over time and then how that looks as you project through the years if you do regular savings and incremental steps. So here's another life situation. And then we talk about, again, saving part of your tax refund. And showing them how much they could save over the number of years if they were to just save their tax refund every year versus spending it. And then as you see, again, we have different paydays. And so then this is an exercise and this is where I'm gonna taper off and not go through the full presentation. But we ask them to write down a savings goal. I want to save, you know, X number of dollars. Um, and I can do so by doing this or uh, what am I going to do with the money? You know, how do I plan on using the money? And so I just wanted to give you a snapshot of actually what the presentation looked like as far as the financial 101 was concerned. And also as a reminder, 
when you purchase the World Knowledge uh, Facilitator's Guide, there are a number of different things that you can talk about with your students in addition to the financial literacy. And so once you have access to this, you have tailored strategies on improving your outcomes as a teacher. You have the master assignment plan that I developed that I feel like all adults and children need a master plan for their life. And then there's the financial efficacy portion, which the PowerPoint directly relates to. We have a technology portion, creative arts, a global aspect, service, mentorship, and then a delivery of services and then additional resources in the back. So this is again, the facilitator's guide. And I hope that this short presentation of what's included in the Financial 101 is something that you um, feel like would be an enhancement to your program and to your students. And so if you're looking at offering this program or if you would like one of our facilitators or myself to come in and teach the program for you, I will be more than willing to do that. Um, and I am available virtually and I also can provide the books for you, but they are also available for purchase. And so you just let me know which sample you would like, whether you would like the bound copy, which is more like a textbook style, which is easy and light to carry, or if you would like the bound version that is a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier. So again, I am Buffy Williams, and if you want to contact me, you can email me at awakenholistic.org. And I also encourage you to go onto my website and look at um, awakenholistic.org.org and look at some of the other offerings that I have. But I am available by phone, and you can call me at area code 334-672-5390. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation today. Thank you.